Chapter 12 Spirits in the Sky I've lost count of the days until we get to Mars. The ship's on autopilot for now, and we're using the time to get to know each other. I was telling the crew about how I met Sue. It was a while back. I was just getting into this new thing called the internet. And there was a little box on the screen where we could talk all day about books. I picked out a few names in the list to ask what was the last book they read and enjoyed. And it was Sue who gave the longest answer. We didn't stop talking for four years. Those days, she was always on the keyboard, working on her novel, when she's not chatting. But in the beginning, I gave her the wrong name. I didn't tell her it was the wrong name, but when I sent her a photo of myself with my best friend, she saw right through me. I couldn't fool an old soul. That's what she said she was. And it was the reason she had a lot to write about in her never-ending novel. She was writing about her past lives. It sounded like she was away with the fairies. But I didn't mind. I loved to chat. And if she were an old soul, I wanted to hear her stories. But eventually we stopped exchanging words and we started sending parcels. It took a few weeks to arrive because she lives where the sky is big and the land is dry. Opposite me, where there is too much rain and nearly not enough sky. I sent her some dried mangoes and coconut. She sent me a box of candies. Sweet, sweet stuff. That made us run out of words completely. Years later, we found it more enjoyable exchanging pictures. She sent me a video of her front yard when an ice storm hit the desert. It was a new year, and it was the same year I decided to start painting my stories. I sent her a copy of my comic books each year, and each time, she was touched, and each time, she squirmed at my spelling. Now, I invited her to come with me in the ship, in search of a place that's the best, a place for our stories to merge, and where the sky is big enough for all of us. <laughs>